Friday. Welcome, everybody, to San Antonio, Texas, and the Alamo Dome. It's the Sylvania Alamo Bowl, presented by Seaman. The Hawkeyes of Iowa against the Red Raiders of Texas Tech, and it's a first down, opening possession of the afternoon by the Hawkeyes. McCann deep in the pocket, middle screen, and he's got it to the down. Bets. 50, and across midfield, he may have the first down. Talked about the key for Iowa is Kyle McCann getting off to a good start. He's made a third down conversion on throwing the football, third down conversion scrambling, and now a big screen pass. So he's off the mark fast. Mike, we also need to mention to the Iowa faithful, Liddell Betts is such an integral part of this Hawkeye offense. Before the ball game, he tweaked the hamstring just a little bit. He did not start. He was on the sideline. He has come in and has run the ball, but to try to keep a very close eye on him, they can ill afford to have him on the sideline rather than on the field. No, Ron, he's the one guy that can change this game for Iowa because they outweigh the Texas Tech offensive line of Iowa against the defense line of Texas Tech, 20 pounds per man, so they need the running game and they need bets. Mike, let's go to the sideline and check with Adrian Karsten. He has more on Liddell bets. What's the situation, big guy? Ron, Liddell did not warm up properly, and the coaching staff reminds me this sometimes happens when you have a month off between games. He came out full of adrenaline, full of energy, went through his paces, but he did not stretch properly. That's why he did stretch the left hamstring, did not pull it. He's about 80, 90 percent right now. He took ice five minutes before he came out on the field, but he's not going to be 100%, and that's going to hurt Iowa's offense. Okay, you see Jeremy Allen in the backfield along with Aaron Gribby, number 34, who's a sophomore out of Ames, and they come straight ahead with uh, the running play short yardage. Smith uh, steps up into the hole to make the tackle. Aaron Gribby, the ball carrier. Ron, you talked about Kyle McKinn. He's had a roller coaster career as the quarterback at Iowa. In his career, he's thrown 23 touchdown passes, 23 interceptions. It tells you a little bit about him 14th in the nation in pass efficiency but he likes the challenge the coaches feel like feel very strongly about him starting today Brad Banks number seven will see some action in the first quarter or early in the second well McCann's off to a good start he's three of very three good. for 22 yards and a key pass to Tim Dodge to pick up a critical third down here's a pass to Dallas Clark the tight end and he'll take it inside the 40 to the 37 yard line now let's make a point about one thing Mike and, and take this story a little further. 9.37 left in this opening quarter. Iowa wants to play ball control because Texas Tech is so explosive with their passing game. And, and they're doing a good job with the throwing game. Now, Kevin Curtis, the safety blitz, Kyle McCann threw that ball right on the money. So Kyle McCann really has started strong. No, he really has, and that, that's uh, the book on him. The coaches said when he starts off hot, hang on. He can be as warm as anybody. And conversely, if it's a slow start, he may flounder. Tenth play of the drive. Good play action. Throws it complete out on the flat to Hill. And Hill will go inside the 35 and down to the 30-yard line. Acock comes over to make the tackle. Let's take a look at these starting lineups, which we did not have an opportunity to do. In the backfield, Lavelle Betts and Jeremy Allen, Dallas Clark, who caught the ball just a moment ago, fine, fine tight end, Oliver and Hill, the wide receivers. Dallas Clark is the guy, the tight end. He's a good that weapon, isn't Kyle he? McCann likes to go to and must catch situations. 11th play of the drive, and this is exactly what Kurt Ferentz and his offensive staff wanted to see happen. They want Texas Tech on the sideline watching and not out with that offense flaring away. Straight ahead, Gribbing will take it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line, short of the first down. Smith and Hawkins, they're on the stop. And this offensive line, they've had a lot of injuries this year. They got Steinbach back. He uh, had a shoulder that was knocked out. Cunningham on the right side and David Porter. Uh, big group. And right now, they are doing an outstanding job of uh, keeping Texas Tech at bay. Yeah, Aaron Hunt is the best defensive lineman on Texas Tech's football team. And so far, Iowa has not blocked the defensive line the running game. Third down, they need to take it to the 27-yard line to keep this one going. Grebbing, right side, big opening, he has the first down inside the 25 and near the 23. Acock in the secondary, but this is an impressive start for the guys from Iowa. 
The linebackers starting for the Red Raiders today. Smith, Lugens, and Jonathan Hawkins. And Mike, how about the secondary? One of the best players in the country, probably nobody knows about, Kevin Curtis, the safety. Uh, a great All-American football player. He is out of Lubbock High School. 13th play of the drive as Chris Oliver comes in motion and they keep it on the ground. Grevin tries to turn the corner. He does inside the 20 down around the 18 yard line hit by Saylor pushed out of bounds over there along with Akon. Well, when you talk to the coaches of Iowa, they say when we start strong, we're, we're a good football team. Times we have not started strong, we have lost. And uh, they haven't played well away from home. They had one win uh, away from home against Northwestern. Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator. Yeah, in fact, Mike, there was a number that went that before they won at Northwestern, that they had gone 1139 days without a win on the road. And this is an away game for them because Texas Tech has more people here. No question. Over 35,000 wearing red and black here this afternoon at the Alamo Dome. Irving again. Oh, buddy. He gets rocked down hard. Hawkins is a man down at the bottom. And then Hunt came over the top to help sandwich on him, and it's a loss. Mistake by Kyle McCann because they moved the outside linebacker, Jonathan Hawkins, on the line of scrimmage. Nobody could block him, so he had a free tackle. Mike, you and I talked before this ball game. Everyone that speaks of the offenses because they're so doggone good on both sides, Iowa and also Texas Tech. But the defense, the guys that make the best adjustments this afternoon, I think those are the ones that walk away with this win. I agree with that, and special teams will be big today. Dallas Clark, the tight end in motion. Play action. Here's big pressure. They throw it back to Clark. Good catch. And goes inside the 20. And I'll tell you, he shows you what kind of athletic ability he has. Flugens is there to make the tackle. He was a walk-on outside linebacker, and he kept watching him in practice and saying, hey, this kid's a great athlete. Let's put him on offense. Special teams is where they first got their inkling that he should be on the field. Quarterback and linebacker in the high school makes a great catch here. Gets his feet up under him, almost picks up the first down. So the field goal attempt is going to be of 36 yards, Kading from that far hash mark. And David Bradley, the putter, is the holder. Low pass, plenty of distance on the kick. Got it. <laughs> Iowa takes a chunk off the clock in his opening quarter, and they go on the scoreboard first. 545 left. Three to nothing. The Hawkeyes. internet services use lots of words to sell you, but conveniently forget to tell you how much they cost. Just for the record, most cost over $20 a month. Meanwhile, Net Zero and Juno are only $9.95, less than half the price. Maybe the others prefer words because the numbers speak for themselves. Join the millions who have united online. Call 877-only-995 or visit us at netzero.net or juno.com. Additional phone charges may apply. The new Explorer's third generation at the Ackerman home. We have to get out. I don't even know where we're going. <laughs> it's like a moving couch. He loves working in the garden. It's got so much space, I could fit a tree in the back. I like the smoothness of it. I love the way it turns. Yeah. I'm driving now. Mom caught our first fish, and though Dad thinks he's the better fisherman. The 2002 Explorer is better for us because it has more room. It's part of the family. All around the world, Siemens is energizing the cities and towns we live in. We engineer new ways to efficiently generate, distribute, and use power. And by providing energy to people everywhere, we're giving them the power to live better. The Alamo 
City, San Antonio. Welcome back to the Sylvania Alamo Bowl presented by Siemens. Well, what a drive by the Iowa Hawkeyes to open this football game. They used over nine minutes, nine minutes and 15 seconds, 70 yards, 16 plays. And we talked about bets. Mikey's trying to get that hamstring loosened up. They need him, Ron, in the running game. Kenny with the 36-yard field goal. He will kick it off. Ivory McCann, number 36. Standing about two yards deep in the end zone. Very high, good coverage kick on a kickoff here. From one yard deep, it's McCann. And he gets muscled down short of the 15-yard line. Excellent coverage. George Lewis is the man who made the tackle. Well, Mike Gottfried, we are about to get an idea of Kiff. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury and his abilities and what is it about coaches sons and why they're so good as quarterbacks well they live and die with the whys of why the coaching staff do things so they understand they watch tape and they live and die this football game well Kingsbury put up some outstanding numbers this year I don't know if he's going to have a, a few butterflies today or not because he is from a small community that's only about 20 miles from San Antonio called New Braunfels Texas and he has got him here but the numbers as far as relatives and friends they open it up Roberts and this is what Texas Tech does they throw the short dump passes the quick out passes and they absolutely drive you nuts here's a good look at Cliff 6 4 2 10 very unassuming young man and he is uh, really taken over at Tech he's got Ricky Williams behind him and a four wide receiver set Walker Roberts Page and Carlos Francis all these receivers catch the ball well to the right side and he'll have the first down. Only 5'8", 196 pounds, but you see he can scoot the offensive line for the Red Raiders. Big group and a very good group. Loper, Hyder, Cecil, Richards, and May. And something we're going to talk about as the afternoon goes on. How about the defense, Mike? And Ron, they'll split out all over the place. Five-foot splits and Aaron Campen, who has 17 tackles for loss, will feel like he's out of the place so wide. Look how wide these oh, splits are. These splits are unbelievable. <laughs> Kingsbury right across the middle as it complete it's going to be a short game but they'll take it to the 31 yard line the linebackers Steen Meyer and Fred Barr how about the secondary Bob Sanders uh, 5'8 194 they compare in Blaine Bishop from the Tennessee Titans in pro football hard hitter I, you know, I know that uh, Coach Leach was at Oklahoma. They use wide splits, but these are the widest oh, ones I've ever wide. seen, Mike. And they throw the middle screen. Glover again. And Glover's going to go for a short game. It'll be third down and about six. Here's the key for Iowa tonight in, in this football game this afternoon. When the underneath receiver catches the football at three or four or five yards, make the tackle. Do not miss the tackle and turn it into a 10-yard reception. That's why tackling, and when you haven't tackled for a month, that becomes very important today. I will tell you. Ricky, uh, I can't tell if it's a leg injury or if he just got his bell rung, but uh, he really was very wobbly when he got up. And now the trainers are not going to rush him off the field. And it would appear he's trying to get the cobwebs out. Texas Tech offensive line, the screen pass, they kind of passively blocked there. Looked like he collided with yeah. his own man, didn't it? They do keep looking down. He keeps flexing that right ankle. Now, we talked about the fact that Iowa just could not have Liddell Betts on the sidelines, just no. as Texas Tech can't have number two on the sidelines. No, it means 90, way too much. Yeah, 92 pass receptions as a running back. It tells you a little bit about him. 726 yards rushing, so he's an integral part of this offense. We just talked about uh, Mike Leach, who uh, spent some time at Oklahoma. Second season at uh, Texas Tech. And uh, had an impressive season. Really, this team continued to improve greatly as the season went on. Third down. 
They need the 38-yard line. Kingsbury throws it complete. Close to the first down. He got it. That is uh, Mickey Peters, a sophomore out of Weatherford, Texas. He had 10 catches in the Northwestern game. Big target, 6'3", 201. Now let's take a look at the splits. Now, here's when you're, when you're a coach and you look at these splits right here, you always talk about run, run through the splits. The linebackers and the defensive line, the defensive ends are so far out, they do not become a part of the pass I, rush. I was going to say, they're not a part of the game, are they, as far as putting no. pressure on the quarterback? Dumps this one out in the flat. Peters again, and he'll turn the corner and step out of bounds. That's a gain of five. And this is, they don't run many running plays, but for all intent and purposes, that is a running play. That's it's like a, a pitch. play. Going back to the line splits, uh, the one thing you do when you split out like that, you invite the blitz. By the defense, Norm Parker doesn't want to take many chances of playing man coverage, but he's going to play a lot of zone in the secondary. Kingsbury, 5-5 five of five to start the ball game. Scrambling, throws that one. Ooh, very hard. It could have been intercepted. Welker was the intended receiver. Here's what you got to do a good job with your team. If you're Iowa, Norm Parker, the defensive coordinator, and Kirk Ferentz, the head coach, they're going to complete a lot of passes. Just don't give them the big one. And trade three yards or five yards for a headache when you tackle them. That's the philosophy you have to have. And you can't get down when they catch the ball because they're going to throw it a bunch. Third down, they need to take it to midfield. Eighth play of the drive, Iowa leads it three to nothing. Kingsbury steps up in the pocket, pressure is on, he's going to run it. And Kingsbury, boy, it depends on the spot. I don't think you got it, Ron. Uh, by the spot, I'm seeing. On the far side line. Yeah, far side, he's going to be close. No, he got, yep, gave it to us. It was the right foot. Yep. <laughs> and it was the right foot spot. And I always see the coaches because they feel like he didn't make it on that sideline. And they're moving those chains quick. I, I, Kirk France can't believe it. I couldn't believe it either. Watching the official come out, come in from the sideline. Yellow line at midfield. That's where his knee goes Ooh. down. His knee goes down about two yards from the yellow line, so he got a break. Kirk Inc has something to uh, to complain about. Yeah, you forget that. Oh, it's just it, go on to the next over. play. Here they come <laughs> on the end around. The they throw just a little bit of everything. That's Francis uh, on that carry. They bring him off motion, turn and give him the ball. It, to me, the most difficult thing, if I'm Norm Parker, I haven't seen this in the Big Ten. You know, and, and to to make the adjustments they're going to have to make, like that to me is just, uh, that's a handful. Well, you just got to be patient. I, I, we talked, and I told you, one of the things I'd do is move Campman in on a guard. You know, if they're going to split that much, no, we're bring all four the, defensive ends, play them on those guards. A little quicker, less size. As you can see, number two, Ricky Williams, back in the ball game. And they drop him right over the middle. Kingsbury frustrates that defensive front. He's going to run it again. And this time he got the first down. I don't think there's any question about that. Dalazold making the tackle. Adrian Karsten, let's check with you. Scary moment for the Texas Tech Red Raider offense when Ricky Williams came off. It exactly just had his belt run. It took him about four or five plays just to get his back to his back. They actually checked the inside of his helmet run to see if there was any damage done. Nothing done on the inside of his head either, so he's back in the game. It wow. just took him a few plays to, to, get, to get the situation back together. I tell you what, Adrian, he looked like a boxer that had just taken a right cross and never saw it coming. 11th play of the drive. This started back at the 14. Iowa's drive, 9 minutes and 15 seconds, started at their own 12. Kingsbury sets up the screen, and ooh, he got fortunate on that one. As Iowa was not fooled at all, Steen, one of the Hawkeyes that came through defensively and was right in the middle to mess things up. Yeah, you talked about Cliff Kingsbury being the son of a high school coach. He received very little interest from colleges out of high school, but he knew he could play. And, you know, I saw a quote where the other day he said, I knew I could be very good in college football. Nobody believed that. Oh, Texas Tech took a shot on him, and he'll be a Heisman candidate next year. The thing that the coaches talk about, they say he lives in the film room. He loves that. This pass too high 
at the Welker. He's intended. Texas Tech crowd wanted the interference. He got and bumped. Not going to be any. Yeah, he got bumped. Bob Sanders, number 33. They, they got bumped, but uh, Wes Walker was the receiver. But the ball was way overthrown. So let's see if they send the Welker back in that area to get the completion. Now to keep this drive going, they've got to go to the 29 and a half yard line. Iowa only sends three men. They drop eight. Throws this one for the end zone. I'm not sure the wisdom of this play tip incomplete at the five yard line. Does he just do it up for grab? Pagel was almost there with the pickoff. I think sometimes you can get frustrated by so much zone coverage and uh, Cliff Kingsbury got frustrated there and threw a high fly uh, baseball up to Carlos Francis. Now Hal Mummy, who used to be the Kentucky coach, who uh, Mike Leach worked for, used to go on fourth down a lot, but uh, Mike Leach is going to punt the football. Wisdom. Clinton Great House, a junior out of Roswell, New Mexico, comes in. I don't think Iowa will see a punt tonight. Uh, I think they'll try to punt the ball inside the numbers out of bounds, Ron. Will not let him return the football. Well, you can see that he's angled. Hill is such an outstanding return guy. Very, very high. Their catch is signaled for and is made. And the flag's going to come down. Even though the player ran behind him, you still have to observe the six-yard safety barrier. 29 yards in the kick, but it serves the purpose. They'll scrimmage from just short of the 10-yard line. Please turn your attention to the video wall for some Manga Albert Bowl trivia. San Antonio Express News. Halo violation on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty from the spot. First down. The player thought, because he ran around him, that the halo is not on the backside of the receiver. That's wrong. We'll take a break. Three to nothing. Iowa leads 104, remaining in the opening quarter. vacation kit and join us on the river. One of the coolest things about Rocky was how he did his training on traditional methods. We'd be pounding on pot roast, drinking raw egg smoothies, chasing a chicken, all that crazy stuff to make himself tougher. That'd be fit for sequels. Ford F-150. Built to last and come in first. Built Ford Tough. If you're taking aspirin for your heart, there's important news about mixing medication you need to discuss with your doctor. It's been shown that ibuprofen, the pain reliever in Advil and Motrin, in some cases may interfere with the way aspirin works to protect your heart. Don't let another pain reliever interfere with aspirin's life-saving benefits. To relieve tough pain, take extra strength Bayer Aspirin. Nothing's proven stronger and more aspirin won't interfere. Bayer, take it for pain, take it for life. Aspirin is not appropriate for everyone, so be sure to talk to your doctor before you begin an aspirin regimen. Number one Miami faces number two Nebraska for the national championship. The Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. Thursday night at 8, 5 Pacific on ABC. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Sylvania Alamo Bowl is brought to you by the totally redesigned Ford Explorer. Only from Ford Outfitters. And by United Online that service for half the price of AOL. Call 1-877-ONLY-995. The Alamo, Central San Antonio. This is really a fun city as you look at Liddell Betts on the sideline and this is uh, this is not good again. Uh, that hamstring we mentioned but in case you uh, just joined us he tweaked it and uh, did not start the ball game. He has played but he continues to ride the bike and able to make sure that they don't have him come up with an injury that makes sure that he cannot play at all. You look at the McCann in the first drive the numbers of what he did. Grabbing. 
Rogers it to the outside. 20, 25, out over the 30 yard line. Longest run from scrimmage. 16 yards, Kevin Curtis defensively. Concern Greg McMacken, the defensive coordinator for Texas Tech, had was first down. He felt like if Iowa owned first down, it put his son him put his defense in such a hole. And uh, so far, Iowa has controlled the first down play. Grebbing with a good cutback. You see the offensive line collapse that defensive line of Texas Tech. By the way, the opening drive that took 9-15, the longest drive by Iowa opening drive this entire season. McCann sets in the pocket, gets this one out. It's Allen. And he's going to have another first down. Iowa now eating up huge chunks on first down. That's good for 15 yards. The reason that was open was because the tight end, Dallas Clark, they pinballed him. They doubled him going up the football field. You see Dallas Clark right here, number 44, being pinballed right here. So the back gets free. Jeremy Allen out in the flat. His linebacker, Jonathan Hawkins, got picked up by and got picked by Dallas Clark. So a couple of uh, huge chunks of real estate coming out of the uh, Red Raider defense if it's first down at the 45-yard line. Allen, the lone setback, and he gets it. Tries to turn the corner, spins around for a gain of a couple. For Acock, who has got, already had about five tackles in this opening quarter. And speaking of quarters, that is the end of the first quarter here from the Sylvania Animal Bowl, presented by Siemens. Three to nothing, the Hawkeyes on top. Six Welcome February 1st on ESPN. Here we go. You gotta love Johnny Cash. The man in black's the kind of guy that doesn't need sparkly outfits, synchronized dance moves. Johnny just bleeds every note till he brings the house down. I'm just saying, don't send a boy band to do a man's job. Ford F-Series Super Duty. Built to toe the line. Bill Ford Tough. That's the way to get it done. Pizza! In my family, if one wants pizza, the other wants Chinese. Pizza. Even their stomachs don't agree. If one gets indigestion, the other one gets heartburn. If one gets nausea, the other one gets... Well, so I get Pepto-Bismol. As it coats, it relieves heartburn, indigestion, upset stomachs, nausea, and diarrhea. It'd take a box full of other medicines to do what Pepto-Bismol does. Agree? Agree. Agree. Pepto-Bismol, first aid for heartburn, diarrhea, nausea, indigestion, and upset stomachs. Day 15, just 900 feet from the summit. Day 15. Where's he going? Oh, hey, guys. Just gonna mail my credit card payment. You mean you don't have a Capital One, no hassle card? Want a choice of payment dates? Try Capital One's No Hassle Card. Plus, get the nation's lowest long-term fixed rates and no telemarketing. What's in your wallet? Cows are going to extremes to get you to eat more chicken. See how in the new Chick-fil-A calendar, packed with extreme sports action and $20 worth of free food. Get yours at Chick-fil-A for just $5. Don't forget the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, December 31st on ESPN. Japanese are expecting a war. Now on DVD and video, history comes alive. We have to strike the heart of Japan the way they have hit us. Pearl Harbor. Own it now on DVD and video. We're here with a bunch of friends in our racing limo to test the power of interstate batteries. Anyone for a power state? Hey, this baby cranking out some power. Interstate batteries, power fast, go from last. Hey, this is my first, second, third place. Woo! And welcome back to San Antonio, the former head coach of the Texas Tech Red Raiders, Spike Dykes, in attendance here. Second down, A lot of people want to know where he bought that sweater at. Well, it was suggested in the truck that possibly uh, it came out of the closet of Cliff Huxtable. Yeah. 1980s. 101 yards for Iowa. 10 minutes and 19 seconds of total time. Red Raiders, 47 yards, 414 in time of possession. That one thrown complete to Hill. Had to go very late. 
and then paid for it just across midfield. It's going to be third down. Now let's take a look at the ESPN game track. McCann opening drive, 57 total yards. Now he's 6'5 in Iowa. Introducing Checkers new screaming chicken strips, packed with tangy coleslaw, famous fries, and tender slabs of old white meat chicken. Hi, I'm the president of Checkers, and if you ask me, these new screaming chicken strips are better than Popeyes and KFC. Oops, did I say that? <laughs> Great new chicken, but what's up with that commercial? New screaming chicken strips. Checkers, high performance human fuel. Hi, I'm Jeff Helms at Streeters. While construction crews are busy getting our new pre-owned luxury center up and going, our used car lot is packed with trade-ins to fit every budget. We have big cars, little cars, trucks, minivans, and sport utilities, all available at great prices. Then we go one step further by offering special financing and like new warranties on a terrific selection of Ford pre-owned and certified vehicles. If you want to buy a used car with the ease and confidence of a new one, come in today and check out our great selection at Streeter Lincoln Mercury, West Kimberly Road, Davenport. It's a special Saturday edition of Monday Night Countdown. Join Mike, TJ, Sterling, and Mort as they catch up with all the NFL news and get you ready for the Ravens and the Bucks. Presented by UPS, 7.30 p.m. tonight on ESPN. The playoff crunch is here on ESPN. Aaron Brooks. Brooks goes to the end zone to Jackson for the touchdown. Ricky Williams looked to stay alive for the postseason against LeVar Arrington and the Redskins. Redskins sings 8.30 Sunday on ESPN. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Sylvania Alamo Bowl is presented by Sylvania, the proud sponsor of the Alamo Bowl. Sylvania, brilliant light. And in part by Capital One, proud sponsor of the Capital One Florida Citrus Bowl on January 1st. One of the many barges that uh, float up and down the Riverwalk goes right through the central San Antonio. As you look at Sapp, his third career interception. Youngster, a sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. McCann on the sideline and Brad Banks, a junior out of Bell Glades, Florida, by way of Hines Community College, fumbles the snap and falls on it immediately. New quarterback. Rodney, like, I like this move. Now, a lot of people are probably sitting at home saying, Kyle McCann is so hot, why do you take him out? But you want you know, when you have a senior quarterback, sometimes you'd like to get your underclass guys in the heat of the battle, not just when the game's won or lost. And Brad Banks has played nine games this year. He's more athletic than quarterback, very active arm. Now, that snap should have taken place on the sideline. Eight to eight for Kyle McCann, so he's hot, red hot. I'll tell you what Banks did. McCann was off to a hot start against Northwestern, and Banks came in and threw an interception immediately. And then McCann came back in the ballgame. So now... And then is sacked by Hunt. Yeah, go back to when he fumbled that snap. When you know you're going in as a quarterback, you get the center over on the sideline when the other offense is on the field, and you take your snaps over there. Brad Banks, two plays now, one sack, one fumble. Third down, and they got to take it all the way across midfield. They need to go to the Red Raider 47-yard line. Three to nothing, Iowa. A lot of people coming into this one are having trouble figuring it out. Who should be favored? But most people were in agreement. This was going to be a high-scoring game, and it's been anything yeah. but. Both long drives, but uh, came up with just a field goal. Three of five on third down conversions as Clark goes in motion. And they go straight ahead with the running play and grabbing with a big opening. He will take it to the 44-yard line, stopped finally by Kevin Curtis. Now, Ron, let's go to the punting team now. Because David Bradley is a three-step punter now. So Texas Tech will look at their uh, block point about nine yards deep from that football. First punt only 25 yards. So you suggested, would you go after him? I'd go after him every time. They've had, four, they've lost four games, not just by punting, but in special teams this year. Very high, wobbly spiral. Welker from the 15-yard line. Boy, there is no place to run. That is excellent coverage by Iowa. Tim Dodge, one of the wide receivers, is down to make the tackle. 41 on the kick, minus five on the return. 
So our score is Iowa 3, Texas Tech nothing. When we return, more of Cliff Kingsbury, the nation's leader in pass completions by a large margin. A big game today puts his name firmly in the mix for next. All around the world, Siemens provides hospitals and doctors with the tools they need to make the right decisions right away. From diagnostics to patient information to care management, we're doing our part to help people everywhere feel better. I couldn't wait to show off my new wheels at the reunion until I told my State Farm agent I really needed it fixed fast and he mentioned Service First. When you choose State Farm Service First Claims Program, you don't have to get estimates. You go straight to a participating repair center where they guarantee their work. It's as simple as that. I was looking good again in no time. Ronnie? Service First, just one more way. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Rider of the Texas Tech Red Raiders showing pistols, the hand sign that is uh, one of the symbols that you look for when you play the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Back in the old Southwest Conference, uh, a rule was passed that you couldn't take live animals on the road. This is a bowl game, different situation. That conference is no longer around. And see Texas Tech, first half they've owned this year. Well, they got poor field position here. Kingsbury will set deep in the pocket. Drills it over the middle. Got the man wide open, Francis. And that is the longest pass play as far as the distance that the pass covered of the afternoon. Good for 19 yards. Johnson was there defensively for the Hawkeyes. Talked about Iowa in zone coverage. In the interception, they went to a three-man front. They only rushed three men on this. And you can see the Iowa players drop in zone coverage. And Benny Sapp with a good break on the interception. So North Parker trying to change it up with three-man rush and a four-man rush. You know, let's don't put all the blame on Kingsbury because that receiver should have done a better job yes. of feeling the defensive back and possibly causing an interference call. But Kingsbury, very cool, drills this one. Incomplete. Francis was hit just as the ball got there. Johnson defensively. D.J. Johnson with good coverage. Cliff Kingsbury uh, has a lot of time, Ron. They, they don't have much of a running game. They are average about 81 yards rushing. Here, Cliff Kingsbury, they get to him a little bit. Carlos Francis, the receiver. Uh, Campman, who was putting a lot of pressure on. D.J. Johnson may have hit him a little early there on that play. Very close. There's a three-man rush again by Iowa. Shovel pass, Ricky Williams tries to hide behind those huge offensive linemen. Pass complete to number two, Ricky Williams. Meyer comes over and makes sure that he does not break it out. Now the Red Raiders going to have a third down and, and a pretty good distance job here. They got to take it out to the 41. Ricky Williams went through a tough time a year and a half ago, knee injury. Didn't know whether he was going to come back for his senior year. His dad convinced him that was the thing to do, and he said it's the best decision he's ever made. This pass, a little too short and not held on to by Mickey Peters. 
So, I, Mike, I just have to say, Kingsbury is not not sharp to open this ball game. No, yet. You, and you asked me the question whether you thought because he's playing it close to his home, with all the people being here, and I didn't think so because late in the year like this, nothing should bother you as a quarterback. But uh, he has not started off here sharp. Clinton Great House, second punt of the afternoon for the Red Raiders. Hill is the deep man, and he's dropped off to the 25. Excellent coverage kick. Very, very high. Hill calls for the fair catch, and he'll make it just inside the 25-yard line. Capital One Bowl Week continues today over on ESPN2 with the Insight.com Bowl at 5.30 Eastern Time. ESPN2, 5.30 from Phoenix, Arizona. Dwight Brady. K-State will know that gentleman before it's all over. And uh, Josh Scooby, the Kansas State Wildcats. Syracuse will know about him as well. Yeah, they'll know about Kansas State, too. <laughs> K-State, uh, they, they had some injuries and fell on some hard times, but they, they were in good position. They could have beaten Oklahoma yeah. in Norman this year. Very good ball play. Both, both good physical football teams. So McCann back at the helm, and it'll be play action. Good protection, and now it breaks down. He's going to try to run it and bumped out of bounds just shy of the 30-yard line by Saylor. I think Kyle McCann was trying to figure out where he was at on that field, whether he was behind the line of scrimmage and still could throw the football because he had a very open wide receiver down the football field. But uh, and Dallas Clark was the guy who was trying to get the ball to. Iowa in time of possession. This game continues this way. It's going to go in at halftime with a considerable margin, and it has to frustrate Texas Tech. It really does because uh, they've done a nice job zone coverage-wise and breaking up and making plays on the wide receivers. Blitz up the middle, Allen, and he gets his feet taken out from under him by Hawkins. And Jonathan Hawkins, a very active linebacker, who got it for five tackles yeah, here already in the first half, and he's been all over the place. Just made a shoestring tackle. So they take Mike Smith, one of the linebackers out. Paul McClendon will come in as the extra defensive back. And we haven't seen much of Liddell Betts, so Adrian's report uh, a concern for Iowa. Allen behind McCann, third down. They need the 35-yard line. Short drop, right over the middle, zings it. I mean, perfect to Hill. That'll be enough for the first down and quiet the Texas Tech faithful. Nine yards in the pass play. Adrian Karsten, let's check with you again. Ron, it's ironic. The more Iowa holds on to the ball, it actually could be a bit of downfall. They open that first drive only just short of 10 minutes. Longest opening drive of the year. It's warm in here. These guys are used to playing their best football in cold, windy weather. About 70 degrees outside, nearly 70 degrees inside. The longer they hold on to the ball, the more fatigue that offensive line experiences. It may show up late third four, uh, quarter, early fourth. Okay, what I agree mean, uh, speaking of warm McCann, still perfect. Nine of nine for 71 yards. Tries to avoid being sacked, cannot get by Hawkins. Again, on the quarterback here. Hawkins has really had a good first half here. As Mike mentioned, very active, and he's been everywhere he needs to be. And going back to what Adrian said, I'd, I'd rather have my team on the field than <laughs> Kingsbury <laughs> because uh, the Texas Tech's going to get untracked here before long. So you just want to keep the ball away from as much as possible. But what I was doing, everything's falling on Kyle McCann's back right now because Lavelle Betts not in the in the game. Chris Oliver in motion. And grabbing huge opening, has five, has ten, coming up at 13 yards. McClendon, the nickelback, made the tackle, and they're going to say officially 14 yards in the carry. That was a good job by the offensive line. David Porter, Alonzo Cunningham, and Bruce Nelson on that side. You see the hole blocked. Just a nice job of kicking out. Flew against the uh, linebacker. Iowa's got everything going now. They're, they're hot throwing the football. They're running the ball well. 
The quarterback is perfect. Grebbing has 51 yards on eight attempts, and their best back is over on the sideline with the problems with the hamstring. They throw this one back. Jeremy Allen, he will go inside the 40. Well, we talked about a roller coaster for the quarterback. He's on a high right now. It's like you go to those amusement parks, Cedar Point back in Ohio, and you get to the top of the mountain, and then before you go down the roller coaster. But uh, in a game against Michigan this year, he, uh, he was booed by the fans uh, at home. He didn't mope. He didn't lash out. He didn't quit. He just hung in there. And, he, and Kyle McCann is showing me something here in this football game. 10 of 10, 79 yards for him. Dallas Clark, the tight end. They pitch it back, though, and it's Grebbing. Grebbing has the first down inside the 30s, down to the 28-yard line. And I'll tell you, they have got Texas Tech just weaving, man. I mean, they are, they've got them totally off balance. Well, sometimes you can miss the point on the, on the time of possession because even though the offense has been out there a long time, you've been taking punches as a defensive guy. You're standing there, you're taking hits. Look at Watch Porter. number 73, yeah, and David Porter. Porter. And when those guys... 300 pounders lean on you uh, for about 25 plays. I mean, you get wore out. <laughs> Porter, 6'7, 315 pounds, a senior out of Belleville, Illinois. On first down, Griffin goes to the left side. Huge opening inside the 20. And he's down to around the 17. Curtis from the secondary making the tackle. And I'll tell you, Mike Leach is going to look at the numbers at halftime and say, hey, fellas, way too many tackles for our safeties. Our secondary is having to yeah. save the day. Another big hole you see on this side. You could draw a truck through there. Stein Grebbing with a good run. Ron, this is going to set up the play action pass, though, because all of a sudden you're talking about Curtis and the safeties making plays. They're going to throw the ball behind them here real soon. Well, Grebbing's career high is 77. He's got 73 right now. And with this run very close to equaling his career high as Hawkins puts the stopper on him. And we'll see if the Hawks do just what Mike was talking about. That is, put it in the belly of Grebbing and then take it back out and throw for the end zone. Yeah, when you're knocking the ball off the uh, line off the uh, line of scrimmage like Iowa is, your play action pass, everything's available for Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator. So, Iowa football team trying to gain a winning season. Tenth play of the drive. Six and five coming in. Well, they run it back into the boundary, grabbing inside the 10, not going to have the first down, but he now has a new career high in rushing for the Iowa Hawkeyes, Smith and Curtis combining on the stop. Here's the one thing you don't want to happen to you if you're Iowa. You don't want to have to settle for another field goal because uh, Texas Tech, they're not going to be blank this entire football game, I don't believe, because they're going to they're going to make some things happen on offense. You've got to cash in with touchdowns. Third down, and they need the seven-yard line to pick up the first. I like this back coming in here. Fred Russell, Fred, number two. Number two, Freddie Russell. Talk to the Iowa coaches. They say he can scoot. Well, they fake it to him, looking for the end zone. Zings it, and that's a catch. It's a tie. They say it goes the offense. It is a catch. First and goal. Jensen, Eric Jensen, took it away from the defensive back, and as Mike said, he shared it for a moment. That was a picture-perfect throw by Kyle McCann. He drills that ball in there. Kevin Curtis is good, is in good coverage. Eric Jensen, a 6'3", 259-pound senior, pulls it away, so they got a tie, and the tie goes to the offense. play of the drive McCann sizzling Oliver in motion and on first and goal at Grimming at right side touchdown Iowa really good block by Jeremy Allen the senior out of Indianapolis and the Hawkeyes have owned this first half that drive was bloody in the nose of Texas Tech's defense. Now, they just ran that football at him in 
Kyle McCann with a couple key passes. Good mix in the offense for the Hawkeyes. Kidding to attempt the extra point. Knocks it home, and with three minutes, 19 seconds left until halftime, the Iowa Hawkeyes scored their first touchdown, and they have dominated it as far as time of possession and controlling this football game. 10 to nothing, Iowa. We'll be right back. vacation kit and join us on the river. Show, just do it. I'm going to make a collect call. 1 800 Collect presents Ava Save a Lot. Torture. Careful how you dial, boys. Ava, we always use 1 800 Collect. Then you already know it saves at least a buck or two. Of course. It's so easy. Thought you had a call to make. Talk about saving some dough. 1 800 Collect. Save a buck or two. Monday, Brandon Doman and BYU stare down Louisville. BYU Louisville, the Axe of Liberty Bowl, 4 o'clock Monday on ESPN. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Sylvania Alamo Bowl is presented by Sylvania, the proud sponsor of the Alamo Bowl. Sylvania, brilliant life. And in part by Dodge. Get somewhere. Grab life by the horns. Dodge. Welcome back to San Antonio. Texas Tech uh, has been stunned in this ball game so far because of that young man right there, Kyle McCann, a senior out of Creston, Iowa. Look at those numbers. 11 out of 11, 87 yards. And the last pass that he threw to pick up a huge third down and give them first and goal, there was just no place else to throw it. He threaded the needle and put it between two defenders. As you look at McCann for Texas Tech, the deep return man. Heading to kick it off. Six yards deep, he's going to return it. Not going to make the 15-yard line again also. No flags are down, so we will take a timeout. 3-10 remaining until halftime. Iowa shutting out the Red Raiders of Texas Tech right now. Beautiful day in San Antonio. All around the world, Siemens helps companies prosper by providing them with systems and controls that assure quality, regardless of quantity. Whatever the product, wherever consumers consume, we want to help them save our life better. Children with Down syndrome are a gift of life. The buddy walk was just an unbelievable experience. There was just celebration all over, all around us. As a mom, it just really touched my heart. I tell everybody about how good Walmart has been to us. Their people came out and walked. They provided lunch. With Walmart, we have become partners. They love our kids. That's what we all want, is our children to be accepted for who and what they are. I was very proud of, of our walk. The people cared about our kids. A Beautiful Mind, nominated for six Golden Globes, including Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Actor. Gentlemen, the great John Nash. His genius was pushed to the edge. 
Tell me what happened. He has lost his grip on reality. But in the fight of his life, I can do this. He would achieve the impossible. Ebert and Roper give a beautiful mind two thumbs up. One of the very best movies of the year. A Beautiful Mind, rated PG-13. Now playing in select theaters, opens Friday everywhere. Well, the Hawkeye cheerleaders are whooping it up, and they got a lot of reason to. Their football team has been really dominant in this uh, opening half of play. Had the ball over 10 minutes in the opening quarter, and they've had it far more than Texas Tech in the second quarter. Let's see if Kingsbury and company can get things going. They are a quick strike offense, but so far the zone of Iowa has, though Iowa's got 128 showing on the clock, Reese Davis, let's uh, check with you. All right, Ron, coming up on the Dodge Halftime Report, we'll check in on a little Motor City Magic. Toledo trying to get a little rocket launcher going. We'll also give you some insight on the Insight.com. Mark and Ron will talk about the best way to handle Syracuse star Dwight Freeney for Kansas State. And also, Georgia Tech has itself a new football coach. Matt McWhorter is going to finish 1-0 as a head coach. See you at halftime, guys. All righty. Best way to get rid of uh, Freeney is give him show fare. <laughs> Draw play to Allen. Boy, he takes that inside the 45, and that's going to be enough for a first down. That's a gain of 11 yards on the first down play. But Texas Tech better be very careful right here. They don't want to go into halftime trailing 17 to nothing. No, Iowa's offensive line owns uh, the defensive line of Texas Tech. They may be wore down a little bit here in the first half. Quick pass to the sideline. He's still perfect. Dodge makes the catch. Steps out of bounds. Now they say officially at the 33. And if you've just joined us, folks, this kid is perfect on the first half. He does not have one incomplete pass. 12 of 12. So just what Mike talked about off the top of the telecast. It has been a roller coaster ride for him, but when he's hot, oh. he's hot. <laughs> he's sizzling right now. Isn't there a movie like that? A movie title? <laughs> but it's not about a quarterback, right? Second down and short. Tech showing blitz off the corner. They come with it. Run goes the other direction by Allen and breaks a tackle, breaks another. Inside the 15 yard line, Curtis finally made the stop. There's still 62 seconds left until halftime, and it's a gain of 20 yards on the run from scrimmage. On the right side, David Porter and Alonzo Cunningham, the 73 and 74, they just own this side of the field. And there's nobody run support-wise to make the tackle on Jeremy Allen. Here it is again. You can see how the uh, when the once those defensive uh, players see those off, big offensive linemen coming around that corner. Nothing well, look there. at total yards: 221 to 92. Allen runs back into the boundary. That'll stop the clock with 46 seconds left. Mike Smith bumped him out. And Ron, there's not many better defensive coordinators in the country than Greg McMacken. Uh, I talked to Mark Mangino, who's just now been named the head coach of Kansas, and he said, uh, not with not including Oklahoma, he thinks Greg McMacken's the best defensive coordinator, coordinator in the Big 12. This guy's been with the Seahawks, Miami, Hawaii, and they win every place they've been. Also is one of the highest paid coordinators in college football. Second down and nine. McCann, but his arm was hit as the ball was thrown by Hunt, and there's his first incompletion. And it's also the first time, really, they've gotten some good heat on him. Well, Aaron Hunt, 12 sacks. 25 for his career and he comes off the corner they miss blocked at the offensive back Jeremy Allen tried to block block him in his ankles watch number 47 he misses him and that's the reason the pass was incomplete third down they need the three and a half yard line for the first down Officially the third sack of the first half by Texas Tech. Aaron Hunt shows you why he's third in the country in sacks, but a wise decision by Kyle McCann not to throw the football, Ron, and take away the opportunity for the field goal attempt if you get it intercepted.
While we have a moment, let's go down to the Riverwalk and get a word from one of our hosts today, Mr. Fran Piscatella of Sylvania. Thanks, Ron. On behalf of the more than 12,000 associates of Sylvania in North America, it is our pleasure as the title sponsor of the Sylvania Alamo Bowl to bring you today's game between the University of Iowa of the Big Ten and Texas Tech University of the Big 12. This year we are joined by our parent company Siemens in hosting today's game. One of the benefits of today's game is the fact that the majority of the proceeds go to the education scholarship foundation of each university and conference participating here today. At this special time of the year, the associates at Sylvania and Siemens and our nationwide network of distributors and retailers would like to extend our deepest sympathies to the families of the victims of the September 11th tragedy plus express our warmest appreciation to all of the rescue workers involved and a wish of safe return to all our armed forces personnel. Thank you for joining us today and please enjoy the rest of the Sylvania Alamo Bowl game. Well, we have 36 seconds left until halftime. Kading's longest field goal is 47 yards. His career long actually is 49, and this one's going to be placed down at the 28. 38-yard attempt for the bar hash mark. David Bradley, the punter, is the holder. Wide left. Folks, that's one of the very few things that has gone wrong for Iowa in this first half. A roar coming up from the Texas Tech fans. We talked to Bob Mike Leach at halftime. He's going to have to have a talk with his quarterback and, and the receivers and just talk about being patient and take what Iowa gives you, a little short throw and turn it into big games. Texas Tech with 33 seconds left, and again, those super, super wide splits with the offensive line. Kingsbury. Miss thrown on that one. Welker, the intended receiver. Ten and 19. 62 yards. This is a team that dominated their opponents in the first half. Have not been able to do it today. Ricky Williams has just has been virtually shut out. This pass is caught by Peters, and he gets out of bounds just across the 30. Bob Sanders had a shot at it. The defensive back, 5'8", 194, just came up a little short. Tech now with 23 seconds on the game clock. Trailing by 10. Would love nothing more than to have some momentum of getting it in field goal range, and they get the big opener. There is Glover, Nehemiah Glover. Down the sideline, bucked out of bounds at the 32 and a half. Five yards, Mike. It took two quarters, almost two quarters, up to 13 seconds, but that was the big play Tech is known for. Nehemiah Glover caught this football against zone coverage and then broke it to the outside. Now look at the yardage he picks up after the catch, almost 20 yards. You can see his quickness, and the angle of pursuit better be precise on a guy like that, or he's gone by you. of time. Now pressure on Kingsbury. Throws this one for the end zone and out of bounds. Three seconds left until halftime. Hail Mary? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta try to put one up. Of course, field goal wise, you're in inside. You got everything going for you. It'd be about a 50-yard attempt. And Treese, the longest for him is 42 yards. I think you take a shot at the field goal here. Texas Tech is going to call a timeout. Texas Tech, their second team timeout. 
just want something good. You want to end this half on something, a good note. And you, you don't have to worry about wind or anything inside the dome. Now, tomorrow it's ESPN Sunday Night Football, the battle of uh, big backs. As Stephen Davis and the Washington Redskins look to match rushing yards with Ricky Williams of the Saints. New Orleans still alive for a playoff berth tomorrow night, 8.30 Eastern, immediately following NFL primetime. Ron Franklin, Mike Godfrey to Adrian Karsten coming to you from the Alamo City, San Antonio. What they're going to do, Texas Tech's going to run their uh, field goal team on the field. Well, this is Greathouse coming out. He's the, the putter. And maybe the distance field goal yeah. kicker also. Figure he's got the best leg. This will be the second longest in Alamo Bowl history if it is good. A 50 yard attempt. Clinton Greathouse. I'll tell you what, he's got the distance. He's good. So Iowa in a position to really put Texas Tech way behind the eight ball. They looked as though they were going to score, make it a 17 to nothing game. They missed the field goal, and they go in at halftime, leading by only seven. So momentum in this ball game definitely has to be going back to the guys in Lubbock. Adrian Karsten, let's go to you. Coach, do you feel like the momentum is coming back to your side of the field now? I don't know. We're not playing worth a damn, and we need to play better than we are right now. Ron? Well, a very <laughs> succinctly put. Adrian, I don't think yeah. we can add much to that. Do you? <laughs> yeah, that's... That was quick work, Adrian. So we are at halftime with our score. Iowa 10 and Texas Tech 3. Let's go back to the studio. Guys, we want to see you add to that comment. <laughs> well, Ron, some artists work in oil and clay and some work in obscenities. And I think some <laughs> might be hovering over the river walk in San Antonio after the halftime speech. Iowa 10-3 on Texas Tech. These two have now played six quarters in Alamo Bowl history. Texas Tech has a grand total of three points. But did you get a sense, Rod, that maybe they're starting to figure out what Iowa's doing to them defensively? Well, I, I think so. I think uh, Mike Leach is going to feel a little bit better in the second half because the seven and eight man drops and coverages, they're starting to get a handle on with crossing routes and opening things up. I think Iowa's going to have to change up their coverages in the second half if they're going to shut them down. They're going to have to go with some man, some zone blitz and things like that to kind of throw Clingsbury off a little bit. Otherwise, I think Texas Tech is going to solve this in the second half. I believe that you're right on that, Rod. Finally, you're going to the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, I believe that yeah, Cliff Kingsbury in Texas Tech <laughs> is going to turn this around. But let's not forget Ricky Williams out of the backfield. He's their leading rusher. He's their leading receiver as far as receptions goes at 92 receptions. This is an offense that has four receivers with 50 receptions or more. Look for them to open it up in the second half. Iowa has done a magnificent job of slowing them down, but I think they have the momentum coming into the second half. They have a rhythm with their offense coming back in the second half, and here's the key. Their head coach is going to be throwing chairs and kicking chalkboards <laughs> over at halftime. They're going to come up fired up in the second half. And Kingsbury's hometown is, hometown is not too far away from San Antonio. Maybe some jitters, although his numbers were pretty good and he was looked pretty good there toward the end of the half although he did get some wrath from coach Leach there in that last play before the field goal 10-3 at the half you know a team that did play worth a um flip was uh Toledo taking on Cincinnati the Motor City Bowl Tavares Bolden leading his team but the Rockets had to take it right down to the end the 2002 ESPN Sports Almanac in bookstores now Carrot Top here for 1-800-CALL-ATT. You don't have to be a great athlete like me to make it to the NBA All-Star Weekend. Because the more times you use 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls, the more chances you have to enter and win a trip for two to the 2002 NBA All-Star Weekend. Eight winners will be paired up with eight NBA three-point shootout contestants. If your NBA partner wins the shootout, you win $50,000. It's easy. Just dial down the center with 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T. Nice shorts, Carrot Strap. Is that trash talk, huh? There's always a combination of taking your knowledge and applying it. For example, I know who the shooter is. I know what he does, what he thinks, under stress, how he'll act, what's his favorite thing to do, what's his least favorite thing to do. And I got most of my rebounds before he took the shot. Knowledge is the edge. At Invesco, it's the approach we use to invest your money. 
You should know what Invesco knows. If you're taking aspirin for your heart, there's important news about mixing medication you need to discuss with your doctor. It's been shown that ibuprofen, the pain reliever in Advil and Motrin, in some cases may interfere with the way aspirin works to protect your heart. Don't let another pain reliever interfere with aspirin's life-saving benefits. To relieve tough pain, take extra strength Bayer Aspirin. Nothing's proven stronger and more aspirin won't interfere. Bayer, take it for pain, take it for life. Aspirin is not appropriate for everyone, so be sure to talk to your doctor before you begin an aspirin regimen. And glad to have you with us on the Dodge Halftime Report. Earlier today on ESPN in the Motor City Bowl, Toledo had been waiting for this since 1949. A rematch of the Glass Bowl when Cincinnati beat them 33-13. to Perhaps more inspiring, the locale of the Music City Bowl in the state of Michigan. 22 Rocket players from that state. Rick Mentor watching for the Bearcats in Cincinnati. Conference USA Freshman of the Year. Quarterback Geno Gadulli sacked. Oh, they were able to tee off on him because Cincinnati couldn't run the ball. Watch here. Gadulli once again. A horrible pass because of pressure. Toledo's defense almost a pick there, but they just took after him because they couldn't see Cincinnati running the ball on the ground at all. Should have been a pick, but Toledo could only muster a 3 nothing lead, and now it's 3-3 when Gadulli finds his range to Tim Walker. 10-3, now 13-3 when Tavares Bolden. Chester Taylor gets a lot of attention, but Bolden can do things. Well, Bolden can do things. He got loose for 99 yards in this ball game. Here he breaks one off for 41, and then in the third quarter, comes right back, fakes the handoff, decides what the heck was throwing it. Let me get going. 28-yard touchdown run that made the game tied at 13. The senior quarterback leading and, of course, working in the senior running back. Give it to the road getter. Chester Taylor goes through, breaks tackles, stumbles and bones, but keeps his ability to run the football down the field. Now watch this. A 24-yard run right mm. between the tackle, straight up the field, gets hit at the five and just dishes off the tackle, goes into the end zone for the score. 190 yards for Chester on the day as he's headed toward a career on Sunday. Fourth and goal, last chance for Cincinnati. Gadouli. Gadouli looking for the Michigan transfer rate. Jackson! It fell to the turf. Another peak. A ball is tipped. Great coverage. Great defensive play. It's amazing that Jackson even got his hands on it, considering all the traffic there. Not his fault. Not your bad, Jackson. No, Gadouli being a great leader there. Toledo wins the game 23-16. to And Toledo now 6-1 and all-time in bowl games. Their last bowl loss, the old California Bowl back in 1984. The UNLV in Bolden with over 200 yards in total offense. And this has been an impressive performance by Tom Amstutz in his first year as the head coach there. He, of course, he has the senior leadership in Bolden and Taylor, but they came and they performed. Their goal is to win the conference. They did that, and then they topped it off with a bowl win. How about the Mac Daddies, huh? 2-0. 2-0, yeah, Toledo. And really, it was the defense that got them going because they really shut down the Cincinnati running game. They gave them 13 yards on 20 attempts, and what that did, it took away the trick plays. They couldn't run the fakes off of the running game, and they, they couldn't throw the ball as well as, as they normally do because they were one-dimensional. This is a team that averaged 42 attempts a game running the ball, only 20 today. That was the difference for Cincinnati. Toledo's defense shut them down. But the Toledo offense, they're a multi-dimensional. And not only running the football, with their quarterback running the football. And I think when you can rush the football, particularly at the end of the season, you're battle-tested. You're used to knocking each other around. This is a very physical football team. They rush the ball for 322 yards. Whenever you can do that, there's no reason to lose a football game. And even in a tight football game, you're going to wear down your opponent at the end of the game. And that's exactly what Toledo did in this game. And the second straight comeback for the Rockets as well. They watched out that 23-point deficit in the MAC title game to Marshall, and then they come back from a much smaller one and avenge the loss in the 1949 Glass Bowl. It was all about yeah, that. All about I that. I think one. it was all about that. You know, you get that redemption motivation, it gets you going. We're feeling it. Yeah, maybe that's what Texas Tech is hoping to do from just the more recent 1995 Alamo Bowl loss to Iowa with Cedric Shaw running wild then, but this time. It is Kyle McCann running. He only threw one incomplete pass in the first half. He's showing some legs here as the Hawkeyes are up by a touch. Resistance becomes strength, becomes power. 
the power to change and reshape your entire body. This is Bowflex, an entire gym in one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance in any room in your home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. One simple workout, 20 minutes a day, three days a week. Bowflex is real, the results are real, and you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Call right now for a free video and brochure. Bowflex, the power is yours. This halftime report is presented by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Go ahead to have you with us on the Dodge Halftime Report, Iowa, up by a touchdown on Texas Tech at the break. Coming up down in Phoenix in just a little while will be the Insight.com Bowl. The last time Kansas State and Syracuse got together in the Arizona desert, the 97 Fiesta Bowl, over 900 yards of offense in that game. Of course, that was Michael Bishop against Donovan McNabb. Not quite going to see that type of offense, ex offensive explosion we don't expect in this one. You're dealing with the Syracuse offense, which has had its lowest output in 11 years, less than 330 yards per game, and a K-State defense that has allowed just three touchdowns in its last five games. It ought to be a tough, hard-hitting affair. Steve Levy will be there to call it for us. Steve? Reese, not to worry. The roof is closed now. It will be open come kickoff for the Insight.com Bowl, 18th ranked Syracuse and Kansas State. Of course, the last sporting event in this building. Another capacity crowd was on hand, but it was managed by Joe Torrey and Bob Brenly, not Bill Snyder, the Kansas State head coach, and Paul Pasqualoni, the leader of Syracuse University football. Hi again, everybody. Steve Levy alongside Todd Christensen. Interesting perspectives for both schools coming in. Kansas State, the way they started the season, had to be just happy to be invited to a bowl game. Then there's Syracuse maybe shooting for a BCS game, at least a New Year's Day game, and here they find themselves on the 29th of December play. Well, first of all, let's begin with Kansas State. Bill Snyder over the last four years has put together a record of 50 and 12. Only Bobby Bowden and Bob Pruitt have beaten that. And so, Steve, unlike a lot of teams that are 6 and 5 in the bowl game, just happy to be there, I think that Kansas State genuinely believes that they're going to win this game. On the other side, the motivation for Paul Pasqualoni, they have a chip on their shoulder as a result of not going to the Gator Bowl, but they have the opportunity to win 10 games. That would be big because Syracuse has only done that four times in their history. Double-digit wins, certainly enough of a motivation for the Orangemen. Pasqualoni clearly has the biggest star in the game. That's the sack master, Dwight Freeney. But Todd, Kansas State doesn't pass the ball an awful lot. Is he taken out of the mix? Kansas State averages 258 yards rushing per game. That is fifth in the nation. L. Roberson only fades back 12 times a game. They can't sack them if they're not back there to throw. Reese a little later over on ESPN2. K-State will look to put the squeeze on the orange. We're going to look forward to it, Steve, and as has been mentioned earlier, Syracuse had hoped maybe to be in the Gator Bowl. Not that this isn't a terrific bowl trip for them. It is. Kansas State, meanwhile, after turning it around in midseason, delighted to be bowl eligible. They had that terrific defense all year, but maybe a little bit of a different feel for them on D in this game. Well, I think that's right. A different feel. The motivation is there, but their defensive coordinator, Phil Bennett, is not. He's moved on to SMU as their head coach, so they'll go with two coordinators, a different situation, a different logistical pattern they haven't had, which could be a problem for them. I expect to see the Kansas State offense try to control the game, dominate by running the isolation play. Josh Scobie right at Dwight Freeney, the big sack master. God, you'd love that, wouldn't you? You're coming to the offensive side. You're coming oh. to the light yeah, side, not the one. dark side. Here's the reason why you do it. You want to put a blister on the butt of a good pass rusher. <laughs> if he's an offensive lineman, you want to knock him on his backside as much as possible. And I can guarantee you one thing. The offensive line of Kansas State are drooling right now because this game plan says run right at the best pass rusher. That's Dwight Freeney, and expect that in this ballgame. Okay, Kansas State really turned its offense around a little bit with the Oklahoma game being the exception when they they stopped passing so much. They had the third worst completion percentage in the country mm -hmm. relied on the run. Will they be able to do that against Syracuse? I know they want to focus on it, but won't they have to throw it effectively? Well, I think they will throw the ball, and I don't know how effectively they will be. They don't have to complete 60% of their passes. They just have to complete the deep ball. Roberson's got a strong arm, and he can get it down the field, and with his ability to threaten containment on the option, I think there will be some opportunities for them to attack Syracuse down the field. I believe you against the deep ball, but I think they're going to have to mix it up. Throwing the ball sometimes underneath and underneath 
coverage, at least to mix it up to keep the Syracuse defense off balance. What the Syracuse defense wants to do is attack the quarterback, get up field, put pressure on L. Roberson. I think in this game we're going to see a lot of two tight end formations running the football, but I think they'll take their chances downfield, but yeah, I yeah. think there'll be a yeah. mixture of underneath pass. Uh, you don't want him throwing the ball into traffic. I, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't think so. And well, the only, <laughs> the only, complete only a bad thing can happen. Yeah, it's been a tough go for them throwing the ball, and I know they want to put a blister on the um, fanny of Freeney, but I'm not sure they have a Bryant McKenney type like uh, Miami who totally shut down Freeney, so we'll be able to see and hear a little bit from I think the sack master is what you guys have been calling in Syracuse. We're trying to get the offense going with James Mungro, their fine running back. That comes up 5.30 Eastern time. We're just about 15 minutes away from that over on ESPN2. You can check out K-State and Syracuse. It ought to be an entertaining one. Ours, a touchdown game at the half. Iowa on top of Texas Tech. The Red Raiders got that offense loose a little bit late in the half. We're back with more after this coordinator as a new Yellow Jacket head coach and Chan being a native of America's Georgia quite familiar with the surroundings. I get a chance to come back to my home state. I get an opportunity to to work in a great city uh, and I get a chance to uh, be involved in in an in a unbelievable university and I, I, I say all of that to say that it's an honor for me to be the head coach here. Georgia Tech, now one of the few schools in college football which can claim its head coach has won a national championship, as Gailey did when he was the head coach at Troy State in Division II back in the mid-80s. He was at Sanford where he took over for Terry Bowden. He's been part of four Super Bowl teams as an assistant coach. And guys, speaking of assistant coaches, he is going to retain Bill O'Brien, the offensive coordinator who took over and studied at the feet of Ralph Friedgen before being the offensive coordinator for O'Leary last year. So Gailey, already at least one step in putting his staff together. Well, and I think that's a good decision will give some continuity to the program and the only issue I think I found with the hiring is could he put together a good solid staff some college coaches because he's been in the NFL for so long curiously though Mac McWhorter doesn't appear to be a guy who will be retained and I think that's a good decision by Chan, Lee, Chan, uh, Chan Gailey if that's in fact what he does because that would be a divisive clubhouse you have a number of players who wanted him to be the head coach and with Gailey coming in you don't want to have divided loyalties Mark I think it would be a good decision on his part to let McWhorter go ahead and move on somewhere else I think you're absolutely right and I think Chan Gailey is the right man for the job but I think right now he has split loyalties and it's a great decision to keep some coaches on the coaching staff but what I mean by split loyalties on one side of him he's still the offensive coordinator from Miami Dolphins he has to come up with a game plan he has to coach these players if they go deep into the playoffs it's going to hurt his recruiting at Georgia Tech on the other side his loyalties in the future are at Georgia Tech where he has to assemble a staff he has to recruit and he has to convince everybody that he is the right guy for the job I believe he is I believe in the long term this is a great decision for Georgia Tech but I think that one of these two teams will suffer and I believe it'll be the Miami Dolphins because you just don't have enough time in the day or the week to put together a game plan then go out and recruit then mm -hmm. put together a coaching staff yeah, I don't think that the loyalties are divided I think they're clearly with Georgia Tech well you're getting 900 K in your first year a chance to go up to 1.2 I mean you know you yeah. can understand and that's but, your future but as his well. check right now is still, it's still from Miami, Dolphins, Miami Dolphins and I didn't mean to imply that he wouldn't do his very best you know there's it's hard to do right it is hard to yes. do only so many hours in the day for sure guy who left Georgia Tech and was brilliant at Maryland taking over. Ralph Regan gets a little bit of good news from practice. Bruce Perry, the Atlantic Coast Conference Offensive Player of the Year, the outstanding running back, ran pretty much full speed. He has a pulled abdominal muscle. had been giving him some trouble. It appears that he will be able to go, at least Regan expects him to, in the FedEx Orange Bowl against Florida. News not so good for another running back, Carnell Cadillac Williams of Auburn, who suffered a broken collarbone in the Alabama game, will not be able to go in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl against North Carolina. Carolina. Williams have been the spark to the Auburn offense late in the season, rushing for over 600 yards. And without him for virtually all of the Alabama game and the LSU game, Tiger offense really sputtered. And Tommy Tuberville openly said the Cadillac was the force driving, but Auburn will now have to search out some other mode of transportation because the caddy is going to be in the shop, at least until next spring. Don't forget, we got a little pro football coming your way. Sunday NFL Countdown, Chris Berman and friends coming your way. It's Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. That's 8 on the West Coast, and you see a star-studded cast that will join Boomer for that. We've still got a second half of football to play down in the Alamo Dome, Iowa, Texas Tech. Aaron Grieving, already a career high, 82 yards rushing for the Hawkeyes. They're up by a touchdown.
dodge. Cows are going to extremes to get you to eat more chicken. See how in the new Chick-fil-A calendar, packed with extreme sports action and $20 worth of free food. Get yours at Chick-fil-A for just $5. Don't forget the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, December 31st on ESPN. We are dreamers. To ensure justice for everyone. Improved health care for all Iowans. That my family receives the same great education I did. But we are also Iowans. For over 150 years, we've been making Iowa a better place. One dream at a time. We're going to help you ring out the old year with the triple header on Capital One Bowl Week. Monday, we'll start with the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Woody Dantzler and his farewell performance for Clemson against La Tech. Acts of Liberty Bowl, BYU and Louisville. Luke Staley will not be able to go for the Cougars in that one. North Carolina and Auburn in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. That will cap off the triple header. 7.30 Eastern time, as mentioned. Caddy will not be running for the Tigers. Clinton Greathouse, it wasn't a work of art from a beauty standpoint, but it looked pretty good on the scoreboard. 50 yards out, it got the Ravens on the board. It's 10 to 3 at the half. The unbelievable deals continue at Kimberly Chrysler. Right now, through the end of the year, receive 0% interest up to 36 months on most new 2002 Chryslers and Jeeps, plus a seven-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty on every single new 2002 Chrysler or Jeep. Also, don't forget about year-end closeouts on all other new and used vehicles in stock. There's never been a better time to buy at Kimberly Chrysler, Kimberly Road in Davenport. Kimberly Chrysler, Plymouth, Jeep, BMW, right on the money for you. Experience the power. Mediacom Power Packs. Experience the entertainment choices of Mediacom Digital Cable. Experience the speed of Mediacom at home up to 100 times faster than dial-up internet access. Experience the value. You'll save money with Mediacom Power Packs. Mediacom Power Packs, the best of digital cable and high-speed internet for one low price. Call Mediacom today and get connected to Power Packs. There is a start, there is a finish, and in the journey between, there are dreams. The NCAA Hall of Champions keeps these dreams alive for you. More than a museum, the NCAA Hall of Champions takes you on an interactive journey. Relive some of the most inspirational moments in collegiate sports history and walk in the steps of the student athlete. At the NCAA Hall of Champions, you'll find something for every fan. Discover what it means to be a champion. The journey begins inside. Welcome back to San Antonio. Iowa leads it 10 to 3. Are leading as they come out of the locker room. McCann, simply fantastic. Right at the very end of the first half, he finally missed a pass. 12 of 13, 97 yards. Griving. Boy, new career high for him, 82 yards. But then just before halftime, mishandled snap. Iowa, for some reason, did not rush at a 50 yard field goal. So we'll wait and see if maybe that is a momentum swinger or. What do you think went on at halftime? I have a feeling it was pretty loud in the Red Raider locker room, Mike. Well, if I'm Texas Tech, uh, Mike Leach, I go in the locker room and say, hey, they had the ball for over 20 minutes. Their quarterback was 12 of 13. We had the ball 9 minutes and 18 seconds. We had the only turnover in the first half, and we're only behind 10 to 3. So it's our game to win. So I think Texas Tech's in pretty good shape right here. As you take a look at the first half stats, a uh, little bit of a, of a walkabout, a slumbering by Texas Tech. 138 yards. They did show as they moved down the field quickly how quickly they can get it done. Yeah, Ron, and you, you look at this 30 yards rushing. They're not a big rushing team, but you got to rush for more than 30 yards to keep the defense honest, at least get them out of that three-man rush. Just a few moments ago, Adrian Karsten had an opportunity to talk to Kirk Ferentz. 
turns to the Hawkeyes are about 30 minutes away from your first bowl victory in five years. What did you tell your team at halftime? Uh, you know, I think we played a real fine first half. Uh, we got them to play the style we wanted to play, but there's a lot of football left. They're an excellent team, an explosive team. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of work to do still. How do you keep it rolling in the second half now offensively? It seems like those big old 300 pounders are making a difference. Well, you know, we made a couple mistakes that hurt us, or we could be up by a little bit more. So we just have to keep our focus, concentration, and we've got to play on defense each and every snap. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Thank you. Run. So, Kirk understands that with this uh, potent Texas Tech offense, can't go to sleep. McCann, the return man for Texas Tech, hitting to kick it off. And McCann on the far sideline, staying loose. 25-minute halftime in many of these bowl games, and the kids come back out and they try to stretch out those muscles and make sure they don't hurt themselves at the beginning of the third quarter. There's a good example. You know, you kick the ball out of bounds. You've been sitting inside for uh, 25 minutes, and you're not ready to go at the start of the half. So the high kickoffs, and in fact, I'll tell you something, he reminds me of a straight-on kicker with the elevation that he gets on the ball. And they have been stopping Texas Tech on every kickoff short of the 15-yard line. Well, now Tech is going to start off at their own 35-yard yeah, line. And that's a couple first downs from what they've been having to do. Ricky Williams today, 15 yards. Credit the defense of Iowa for really getting after him. And Betts on the sideline trying to get that hamstring to loosen up. The left hamstring is the one that's giving him trouble. Middle screen. Francis. And, and Mike, just seeing that play right there, Iowa extremely well schooled on defense. Yeah, defensive lineman Derek Pickens, number 92, he started to rush and then he played off on the screen. Norm Parker's making all the right calls so far, but he, he knows, and Kirk Ferentz knows, they're one or two plays away from tying this football game up because they're so potent. Second down, got him open, near sideline, Glover. Glover is the man that broke open the, the big play to put him in a position to get the field goal. That's good for 16 yards. That's what you have to do against zone coverage. A three-man rush, you gotta just be patient, get Nehemiah Glover right behind the corner in front of Benny Sapp. Breaks off the corner route. Well-thrown ball by Cliff Kingsbury. Defensive numbers. Glover, by the way, four catches, 57 yards. Meyer <clears throat> led the Hawkeyes with four and a half tackles, four solo. Barr had two and a half. Sanders had two and a half in the first half. As Ricky Williams will Ricky go for short yardage down to the 47, Pickens again. Even though that play only picked up two yards, it's a good play call by Mike Leach because it'll slow the defensive lineman down Make them respect the running game. Here's a no huddle, but now here's a play where you spread everybody out. Now Iowa's trying to figure out how to play this. Maybe a quarterback draw. It's Tech taking a long time to get it off. Iowa still bouncing around saying, what do we do? And they'd get it out to Welker. Welker is going to be hit immediately and knocked down by Barr. Barr got blocker. him behind the blockers. Yeah, that's a Steve Spurrier play. And what uh, Mike Leach is trying to do right now is find something to hang his hat on right now. They're not huddling. They're going to some trick formations here. They spread everybody out. I thought they really should have ran the quarterback draw right here. There's nobody here. I'd come back to that and run the quarterback. Third down. They need to take it to the 39-yard line of Iowa. Kingsbury got him over.